You guys, there are two F1 pages. The reason being is because there's one for rear motor and one for mid motor. Since I am running mid motor four gear, we are going to pay attention to this side. What we're going to be doing is installing our shock tower and our body mounts. So guys, once we have everything out of bag F1, we're going to want to go through the stuff uh, that we are going to be needing first. Now you'll see that this part tree does contain two pairs of rear body mounts. We are not going to be needing these ones. These are the ones you'd be using for rear motor. We are going to be using these two because we are doing a mid motor build. We've gotten these two body mounts here that are for mid motor. We also are not going to need our motor cage here so we can put it off to the side. So if you guys are building mid motor this is basically what you will be looking at right here. Two body mounts, your rear shock tower, your transmission case, and some screws from bag F1. Let's get this started. So once you guys have gotten each screw out, it is time for us to actually mount our body post to our shock tower. Now, there is a certain side that these shock towers screw into. Mount our body mounts to our shock tower. We want to figure out which side we are going to be screwing into. This is the front side here. You'll be able to tell because it has these little cut-in designs here. The back side will not. And then once you locate your front side, you're going to want to grab each body mount and figure out where they are going to line up onto your uh, actual shock tower. So it's going to be these screw, this screw right here that sits above these two. So now that we've emptied the screws here from bag F1, we are going to now move on to getting our body mounts actually mounted onto our shock tower before we put our shock tower onto our transmission case. So we are going to want to find the two screws that will be needed to mount our body mounts to our shock tower. So they're going to be screw number 705003, which are going to be the two smaller screws out of um, the bag. Hey guys, so once you have your screws put to the side and your two other ones here, these two screws are going to be mounting into these two holes on your shock tower, one and two, right up top here. So you're going to want to drop one in first. Just drop one in. It should come out the other side. Flip it over. Make sure you keep your finger on the screw. Grab your body mount and make sure you have this side facing towards it. There's going to be a little uh, flat piece right here with a hole in it. And that's where it's going to be screwing into. You're going to need your 2 millimeter hex driver. What I like to do is screw it in by hand a little bit first. And then I'll grab my hex driver just making sure that my body post is staying on there. You can now see that I have it screwed in by hand a little bit. Now I'm going to grab my 2 millimeter hex driver and screw right in from the back. It shouldn't be very tough. So once you have it nice and tight, you're going to want to move to the next body mount and do the exact same thing. Once we have our body mounts on, they should be looking something like this. You can see that we did screw in from the other side there. Now you're going to want to grab your transmission case and it will slide right over the top here. Make sure that you line it up with the few or the four screws. There will be two on this side and two on this side on your transmission case and your shock tower should slip right over them. And then we're going to screw in on these two and then these two on this side. Okay guys, so now that you have your shock tower lined up correctly with the holes on your transmission case, we're going to want to find screws number 704013. These are going to be your uh, screws of this size. There's going to be a total of four of them. So they should look something like this. They're going to be the flat top screws out of your F1 sub bag. You can see there, these four screws, they're going to drop down into one, two, and one, two on each side. Very, very easy. Just place one right in there, grab your two millimeter hex driver, and then start screwing in. So now that you have your shock tower mounted, your body post mounted, it should all look like this. You can see that we have the two screws right there and right here. Now we're going to move on to installing our pivot balls that are found in bag F1. And they're going to be going on your outermost screw here. So one here. And then one right here. So both go on the outermost 
uh, hole there. That's just the way the factory uh, manual tells you to do it, so that's the way I'm going to be building it. Now the manual does say that these pivot balls take a 2.5 millimeter driver to use, but as I found again, it is a 2 millimeter driver. As you can see here, it is not coming off, and this is a 2.0 millimeter driver. So just a little mistake in the manual there, it's not a big deal really. So you're just going to bring it right on top, it takes no uh, washers or shims or anything. You just screw from right from the top and get it as tight as possible. So now that we have each pivot ball screwed into the outermost hole, which is actually going to be your hole number two, you'll be able to see that on the manual, so your two outermost holes. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is actually going through one more screw from our body mount that goes, actually goes through your transmission case and through your body mounts and out the other side. It is going to take this screw here, your longest one from bag F1 that's been sitting to the side for a little while, and then this top nut here. Once you see it sticking out some, you're going to grab your top nut and that T-wrench we used earlier to tighten down our slipper. We are going to then get this nut, put it on that screw, and tighten it down with that T-wrench. Now that we were able to get this screw in, we then put on the nut with that T-wrench we used earlier. And it should be sticking out just a little bit. So once you're done with F1 guys, this is what it should be looking like. This concludes this part of the build series. We are going to be moving on to the next part in the next video. So thanks for watching guys. See you later.